Welcome to the Paper Paintings Collage Studio. Today I want to talk about tearing paper with and without white edges. Lots of times students ask me, how do I get rid of that pesky white edge? I don't want white edges on all my pieces of paper. Well, I can teach you how to do that, but I want you to also consider embracing the white edge. Sometimes using the white edge to your advantage works well. My wind chimes. The studio sliding glass doors are open to the patio and it's a beautiful day. Anyway, tearing a white edge to use as a highlight on one side of an apple stem or as a white borderline around a tiny black bird eye, that's when you use it to your advantage. So you want to learn how to tear with and without white edges and get ready because I'm going to show you. This is what is at the uh, side of my easel at all times. It's a bunch of drawers on wheels. Everything in my studio is on wheels. That way I can move things around according to the light. So here's the paper that I'm working on in a current commission project and it includes a lot of dark blues which will look best without white edges. So let's talk about how to do that. So here I've got some dark papers with white on the back. White edges is only an issue when you have white on the back. If you have a rice paper, the color bleeds all the way through and you don't have to worry about white edges. That is the nice thing about rice paper. There's never a white edge. However, when you're doing a commission or using special papers provided by the client or just using a variety of papers, you don't always have the option for the white. So if you're right-handed like I am, you're going to pull up with your right hand. If you're left-handed, then you're going to pull up with your left hand. Either way, you're going to take your dominant hand and pull the paper up towards yourself. When you do that, the white edge is not in the piece that's in your dominant hand. It's left in your non-dominant hand. So you need to remember that there's no white edge in the piece that's in your dominant hand. And that's the piece that you are going to make a shape out of. So because I'm right-handed, when I want to make a square, I am going to use my dominant hand to create that shape. So pulling up, rotating the paper, pulling up again, rotating the paper, pulling up, rotating the paper, pulling up. Now there's no white edge here. The white is left in the piece that's in my non-dominant hand. I'm creating all shapes with my dominant hand. And now there's no white edges. Now let's do a circle. I try to keep the paper so that it fits in the palms of my hands. So when I'm trying to tear intricate shapes, I don't have to tear it out of an eight and a half by 11 sheet. I wanna work small. So here I'm gonna do a small circle. I'm gonna pull up with my dominant right hand and rotate the paper with my non-dominant left hand so that I'm always pulling up. So I'm tearing up, I'm rotating, tearing up and rotating. I go around and in my dominant hand is my shape without white edges. In the non-dominant hand remains the white edge paper. So there's two shapes without white edges torn by tearing forward up towards myself with my dominant hand. Now, when I want to tear that little bird eye and I want to have a white edge, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, only I'm going to flip the paper upside down. That way, I am creating a white edge when I tear, but I'm still tearing in the way that I'm familiar, which is up towards myself. So here's a square. Up towards myself, rotate. Up towards myself, flip it over, and you have a shape with white edges. Let's do that one more time. Let's make that tiny bird eye find something dark. Being that this is a commission, I'm using some papers that I would not normally use, such as a slightly shiny magazine paper, but these papers are significant to the client, so I am using them. Here's a pretty dark area of a paper with a, what, with a white back. So again, I'm gonna turn it upside down. I'm gonna tear that little bird eye. I'm gonna pull up towards myself in very small movements with the, my dominant right hand and my non-dominant left hand is simply rotating the paper. When I get very, very specific, you can see that my thumbs are super close together. Detailed tears require slow, small movements and thumbs very close together. Now I'm thinking about that little bird eye, so I'm making small movements, but I am still pulling up towards myself with my dominant hand and there, there it is somewhere. There is my almost perfect bird eye with the white edge. There's a bit of a point right here. 
That's pretty good. Not too bad. So there it is with the white edge by tearing it upside down. The same way I created the square with the white edge by tearing it upside down. So there you have it. It takes a little bit of practice. You have to be um, close together with your thumbs when you're tearing small shapes, but you can be far apart with your thumbs when you're tearing bigger shapes. And again, I never tear anything larger than about this. This is really as big as I go because I don't want any bubbles or wrinkling or cockling of the paper, but that's another tutorial lesson. Thanks for being here and I will see you soon.